So the first thing we're going to talk about is Splunk's reporting functionality. And what's really cool about this is that, well, first off, reporting is just a safe search. So these search results right here can make up a report. Now, with that report, you can share that amongst other users or employees in your company. So people don't have to rebuild the same search from scratch. And if you do need to make some modifications to that search, you just open up that report and make the modifications. So I'm going to show you guys all that right now. So here we have our main index. Well, OK, and the use case here, let's just say your vice president of sales has assigned you with gathering the monthly sales data for the company. OK, so this is what we're going out there to find. And we're searching our main index. We have our source type. We have the action here or the action field um, equal to purchase. So this is what the data that we're interested in. And we're going to make some statistics off of that. And we're going to do this by month. And we're going to search in all time because I have some static data. Perfect. This is exactly what your VP is looking for. Here we have the months, the months listed out and the total number of sales here. So looks like the company's doing pretty well. So next step, all we need to do is come in and come in and hit the save as button, select report, give this a nice title. We'll call this monthly sales. And you can obviously add a short description here. However, I think this title says enough for us. And we're going to go ahead and select the time range picker. And we're going to click save. From here, you can edit out the permissions if you want to make this global for everybody to view or make this private or maybe in a specific app. Schedule this out, accelerate it, or embed it into a dashboard. We're going to schedule this out. We're going to click Schedule Report. Since your VP wants this to be a monthly report, we're going to go ahead and select Run Every Month on the first day at 12 AM. And here we're going to leave these other parameters as default. And I just want to jump into the Add Actions in case your VP wanted this to be sent to him or her in an email or maybe um, some other C-level executives would like that in email as well. And as you can see, there's some other functionality here you can have with these ad actions, um, depending on what kind of apps and add-ons you may have in your environment. We're going to go ahead and select nothing and hit save. And there we have it, folks. We have created our first report. And let's say that your VP is satisfied with it, but he would like to make a couple minor changes to this. Regarding the field title here, instead of date underscore month and purchased, he would like this to say just month and total sales. So this is really easy. We open this up to search and we start renaming making, and making the modifications here. So we're gonna rename date underscore month as month and purchased as total sales. Hit enter. There we have it. Our field names now reflect what our VP was wanting, month and total sales. And this is great again, but your VP would like to make one more minor modification. And he would like to see the months in ascending order. All right, so we're going to throw in the sort command, minus function, and attach it to the month field. There you have it. In ascending order, we have the total number of sales. So in October, we sold 1,200. In November, we sold 7,100. Next, don't forget to apply your new modifications here. And hit save. View this. And open this up back in search just to verify that it took our new modifications. And there we have it. And also, you can go into reports and call upon your reports by name. There's ours. And that's it. Now let's hop on over to the Splunk dashboarding side of things. We're going to use a different data set here. So we're going to have a little bit more fun with this one. Let's, go, let's say you are a movie buff and you would like to see the total number of movies um, amongst all these different streaming platforms. So you have Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. 
Okay. So again, we're going to go ahead and search in all time. And here we have it. So we have a total of 5,611 and 11 movies or TV shows amongst all these different streaming platforms, which is great. So this answers our question. We wanted to know how many were out there, but we would like to make this a little more um, aesthetic. We'd like to add some visualizations to this, bring this data to life. And here, when we hop into the visualizations tab, you can see that Splunk offers a number of different visualizations that you can select from. So in this specific case, we're going to go ahead and select the single value. That looks great. We're going to save this as a dashboard panel. All right. And we're going to give this dashboard panel um, a name or we're going to give this actual dashboard title. Uh, we'll call this movies and TV shows. Okay. And we'll call this our dashboard panel. We'll give this a title of total movies slash TV shows. Great. Hit save, view dashboard. We're going to look at this. And there we have it. it. Looks pretty good. All right. So we're going to add to this dashboard here. And now let's say your parent your responsible parent, and you would like to see the um, the breakdown of the movies by a specific age group. Okay, let's say you have some younger ones that you know you want to make sure that they're watching the appropriate movies. So here you have it broken down by the age groups. So here, you know, 13 plus, we have four movies. So you know, not too much to choose from there. 16 plus, and on down, we have a lot more to choose from. And again, this answers our question. This shows us the data. However, we'd like to see this in a different visualization. So let's make this a, yeah, let's make this a bar chart. This shows, shows our data pretty well. All right, let's go ahead and save this as another dashboard panel. We're gonna save this to our existing dashboard, which is movies and TV shows. And we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna say movies by age group. Save and view this. Let's take a look at this. Great. This looks good. This looks good, but let's keep adding to it here. So next thing, let's say you're interested in all of these movies or TV shows by year. Say you're only, um, maybe you don't like the new movies that come out. So you would like to have or be able to easily find out what movies are made back in the 1900s, let's say. And sadly, there's not too many, <laughs> but we're gonna change this to, into a different visualization as well. And I was thinking about a pie chart and looks like we've already got this and we have a lot more movies in the 2000 era. So millennials are kind of winning on this one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save this as another dashboard panel, save it to our existing one, movies and TV shows, give this a name. We're going to say uh, movies by year. Save that. Let's take a look at it as well. Great. This looks good. This looks great. Things are coming along. So the last thing we want to add to it is we want to see the ratings by movies. Okay, so we're going to add this to our dashboard. And here you can see we have our ratings and the movies all gathered together in one row. So it's associated you know, with that certain rating there. And sorry if uh, some of your favorite movies are in this lower rating uh, category here. But let's say you would like to see the highest rating movies. So that, that's how you're going to base your decisions on if you watch, them, watch a movie or not. So we're going to go ahead and sort our parameters in descending order here and voila it looks like uh breaking bad and hungry Hen henry and band of brothers and green paradise looks like these are good movies or tv shows to start watching on netflix hulu or um, any of those other streaming um, platforms 
And we're actually going to leave this as a statistical table because I think this represents uh, the data very well. And we're going to again save this as a dashboard panel, save this to an existing one, movie and TV shows, and give this a name. We'll call this movie and TV show ratings. Hit save. Do the dashboard. All right. This looks great. This looks good. And one other functionality I would like to bring to your attention, you can move these dashboards around. So let's say we'd like to see both of these side by side and have our statistical table down there at the bottom. And we can add a dark theme as well. So we save all these, refresh the screen. And there you have it, folks. Splunk's basic da basic dashboarding in a nutshell. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And come back and see us. Take care.